Welcome to part two in why did this turbo diesel engine blow? If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link in the description below. But what I've done this morning is I've removed the valve cover. That's usually one of the first things I do and take a good look at the camshaft. Make sure the camshaft is not broken. Make sure these lobes haven't flattened out and you've got a lot of play in the rock arms here. I also are checking the chain to see if the chain is tight. Uh, you'd be amazed if you lose a chain in one of these, you know, you won't even be able to usually turn the engine over. It'll just seize up. But that looks okay. Then I went ahead and pulled the oil filter because I'm pulling the oil filter and looking for very fine metallic particles. You won't usually find chunks of metal in the oil filter housing because the pickup screen in the bottom of the pan will catch those. But you may find very fine particles of metal. So I'm going to take you over to the bench now and just show you a close-up of that oil filler. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the radiator out of here and we're going to turn the engine over and check internal engine timing. So I let the oil drain and kind of take a look at the oil. You'll see, a, you know, little silver specks in the oil if it's really bad. Same thing here on the outside of the oil filter in the bottom of the oil filter right in here. This looks okay. So at least from that standpoint, I'm not picking up fine metal anywhere in the oil that I can see. For the next test, I want to check internal engine timing. We've pulled the radiator, the fan shroud, and the fan clutch, and we're going to turn the crank over to get the marks down here up on top dead center, and then we're going to check the timing marks on the camshaft. Uh, it's coming up. You can see the pointer there. We're going to get it right on zero. Okay, that's good. All right, now let's come over and look at the marks on the camshaft. Okay, those are lined up. So the problem is not related to internal engine timing. We also got underneath the car, pulled the cover off the bell housing down there and checked to make sure the torque converter flex plate was not cracked or loose and that is okay. Before pulling the cylinder head on this engine, I thought it'd be a good idea to give it a compression test. We've taken a lot of, of things off the engine, but we have not removed the glow plugs yet. We just put a new battery, brand new battery. So we're gonna have a strong battery when we do this test. Okay, let's see what number one looks like. Okay, hold it. Wow, that's impressive. 390 PSI on number one. Let's try number two. Okay, Ryan, let's roll on number two. All right, we're getting 385 on number two. Well, so far it's looking good. Uh, Ryan, you ready on number three? <laughs> oh no, why is it always number three cylinder? You gotta be kidding me. Look at this, Ryan. We only got 240. Aha. Uh -huh. Number three, again. Again. <laughs> so Ryan, you gotta be kidding me. This is number three, same as Digby, same as that other car I recently worked on. Yep. What is it? Is it because it's in the middle? It's, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. gotta be in the middle, it's right? To have three, issues with number three <laughs> cylinder. This is unbelievable. Just... Hey, do you think we should do a pre-chamber check? Yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> three three pre-chambers <laughs> oh, oh my Let's word. Let's go ahead and finish the compression check, but I want to okay. do yeah. one more. Usually when I get a low cylinder, I'll make sure that the fittings are tight and everything, and then yeah. let's redo number three, and then we'll do four and five. Agreed, okay. Some of you watching this may have noticed what I noticed, that the engine was dragging a little bit, like something was actually scraping in the engine on that last test. Let's see what happens now when we test number three again. Go ahead, Ryan. Okay. okay. Yeah, 260. Yeah. All right, let's try just for fun. <laughs> four and five. Okay. 
310. Okay, go ahead. Let's look at number five. Three hundred and thirty. So give me your thoughts. What did that compression test tell us anyway? It was a roller coaster. We start off super strong oh, wow, with yeah. the first two and then get to three and four and it's like, oh, okay, three is it, are we going to fight this again? And it's significantly lower. Yeah, um, okay. And then four and five kind of split the difference. But. We did have a little, we did have three and four ki kind of together being low, you know, if you had two of them together that were real low, it could be a head gasket. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that the cylinder heads in these crack. Okay. But normally when the engines are cold, the cracks are not open, so it's not going to indicate a crack. Yeah. So yeah. we don't have anything definite here, do we? No. We, and we know, yeah. The, the addition of that dragging the resistance on cylinder three the first time we tested it, it's kind of... Another oh, yeah. another question mark, you know, something it kind of made pretty me concerning. cringe, yeah. like something was scraping yeah. down inside the engine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what I'm going to have you do now is I'm going to have you pull those glow plugs out, okay. and we're going to do a pre-chamber check. Okay. And if we find another bad pre-chamber, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to lose it. Yeah. I want to tell the viewers a couple other things that I've noticed. Number one, as we look down on that front crank pulley assembly. We've got evidence of a severely leaking Severe. front crank seal. We're talking yeah. about major. We got gunk and oil all over the place. When I come across these type of problems with these diesels, a lot of times it's either loss of coolant, yep. loss of engine oil, okay. and now it's fuel injections overspraying. Yeah. We've, we've yeah. learned there's a we've third learned, reason yeah, exactly. for catastrophic engine, that. <laughs> engine failure. Yeah. But along with the, the evidence of an oil leak on that front main seal, we pulled the engine oil cooler off. We noticed it was all oily. You can see some of the oil here, but right here, as we cleaned this off, we found this pinhole. Something, maybe a rock down in there on the bottom frame was wearing against the, the oil cooler, but we had a leak coming out of the bottom of the oil cooler is small, yeah. but you got to remember you combine the crank seal with the leak out of the oil cooler yeah. with long drives. Well, and, the, yeah. and you saying that now makes me think back to when removing that, removing that fitting and there was a bunch of debris, dirt, gravel and oh, yeah. stuff okay. there. So it wouldn't be out of the question to have a rock in there yeah. and then it, with it vibrating, wearing a hole and then leaking. So yeah, I think, I think the, the overheating is on the right track, but it's whether loss of oil, loss That's of right. coolant, you know. Because I think some people don't realize if you're running low on oil, even though you have oil pressure, you could be creating excessive heat. Okay, yeah. Because the oil's not getting yeah. cooled down. Yeah. So the engine temperature will come up. But, you know, in all the years I've worked on these diesels, loss of engine oil mm -hmm. is the number one culprit okay. for yeah. catastrophic engine failure. We're not going to know anything definitively until we tear this engine down. And I did mention that in part two, we would be pulling the cylinder head off. But I think we've spent enough time on part two. We've got other jobs we've got to do in here in the shop. So we're just going to take those glow plugs out. Yep. Or you're going to take the glow plugs out. We're going to do a, a pre-chamber test. And then uh, in part three, we'll come back and pull the head. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so we're using this is a preliminary test to see if there's a total failure of the pre-chamber and the fact that this is only going in so far is telling us that the ball's there, the tip is intact of sorts, but this isn't definitive. We'll have to pull the pre-chambers to see. What we're looking at is to see if we're finding a total failure like with this one where the tip's gone, the ball's gone, the ball pin is gone. Uh, if you haven't seen our other videos on the pre-chambers, this is a good pre-chamber here, you can see. So I think that pretty well wraps up this uh, segment. Yeah, part two, right? Yeah, I didn't, think that pretty well wraps up Didn't part we two. promise people we were gonna take yeah. the cylinder head off we in part two? We did promise, so I promise <laughs> I'll get the cylinder head off for part three. So we've got some suspicions going forward, but no smoking gun yet, so we'll keep digging.
All right, stay tuned for part three.